All right, guys, welcome to the video. I'm not sure if I can put it here. Is it okay? Cool. All right. Welcome to the video. Day three of everyday YouTube challenge, something like that. And it's been, uh, it's been a very challenging journey, only the three days, because I am not basically deciding what to talk about just come up with some idea or one single idea that I want to talk about. And it's very challenging for me because I have been writing a script to make a video, whether it's a, uh, Instagram and TikTok and YouTube. And I just actually created a Instagram reels. It's like one minute, 10 seconds of video, which I am basically came up with uh, the same topic as yesterday, which is vulnerability. And then I spoke one minute uh, a bit without any script or any thing that I decided to talk about. And it's very challenging for me, but the reason why I'm doing this to literally just, you know, show my uh, show show up as a vulnerability as a vulnerable self and to be okay with all these, you know, grammatical errors and then making a mistake and not being able to completely accurate and solid when I speak because you have to practice. So I am very good at speaking, however I believe there is another level to achieve. So this is one of the reasons. And second reason is being affordable, obviously. And third reason is in this, I can just show up every single day. And maybe some people need every single day of support and different ideas. And if you enjoy watching my video for a period of time, the last couple of months or who knows, a couple of years, I really appreciate that. I really appreciate your support. And I think this is going to be a good payback from my side because you know I was making contents maybe only YouTube is like once a week or twice a week sometime I just you know disappear for a month because I'm busy with other things and etc so I'm very committed to do this and I hope that you can support me as well and yeah please let me know the feedback and everything else in the comment and I'm happy to read comment and reply. Cool. Today, I want to talk about self-healing. And this is a very, very important topic because I think nowadays we are more consciously aware of this healing and back in the days, like 100 years ago, or like even, even 70 years ago, I think self-love or the self-healing is very, very unpopular compared to now. Well, even though Native Americans indigenous South America, they, you know, the healing is basically rooted in our traditions, right? In Japan as well. I'm not sure other countries like such as Europe and other places if, but yeah, the witchcraft is coming from Europe and the uh, West, I believe. So the healing is not that new, but I feel like in a society, the healing is kind of like a trend. Self-love is, has been a trend, but I mentioned that the reason why I love, I love teaching self-love and self-acceptance and being so uh, completely confident as who you are is because the Bruce Lee said, in order to master yourself, mastering yourself equal mastering your life, start from accepting yourself. And I found that is very, very important because we often seek answers and happiness and, and you know, abundance externally and in believing that fills us up the blank space within us but that's not the case you know the, the missing piece within you has to be has to be found within you you cannot just like bring the physical materialistic thing to feel absent energetic space so i would like to talk about healing because i am huge believe i am a huge believer in healing and i've done that multiple times in in a, a lot of different ways I've taken a plant medicine and I've done quite intense meditation journey. I've done a fasting. I've done um, the breath work dozens of times in order to reach that certain level of healing journey, DMT activation. I believe that there's a step to heal yourself. But I want to mention that this is very important to understand the healing has its limitation. And what I mean by that is 
You know, once you healed yourself, let's say as an example, let's say that you have a boiling water in front of, in front of you, you're boiling water, and you want to you know, try and drink a tea or something, but then you accidentally spill it on your arms and it hurts so fucking bad, right? And then most likely you get a wound and a scar afterwards, even, even if it's completely healed. There's no pain, there's no nothing, but you're most likely to get scars afterwards. And this, is, this happens in our internal state, you know, such as you know, child healing, or the past trauma healing, or just you have like a bunch of traumas or past, you know, the emotional experience that you want to get rid of or heal. However, once you reach a certain point, it's completely healed. Your inner child is completely healed. You feel fulfilled and happy, and there's no a trauma is bothering you. But the reason why people believe that they always need to go and heal themselves or like use plant medicine and over and over and over and over, even though the scar is completely healed. You can't just put the Vaseline on a healed tattoo. So it actually doesn't help you to try to heal something that is completely healed but left with the scars. But what you need is to decide to live with it. And I know it's easy to be set down, but Obviously, everyone goes through different stories, and some people have many more traumas, and some people have few. But it doesn't matter how many traumas you have, how many things that you want to heal from, but you have to remember the certain level that you reach through healing, whether it's a meditation, or whether it's a plant medicine, or whether it's a you know other breath work, uh, cold plunge, and all the other things. You reach a certain point where you have to decide okay, this is going to be a scar and there's no way that you can heal the things that you, it's already healed and you have to live with it. And that determination and that decision within you, the, the courage, will give you support and guidance to live with the scar. But if you are on a journey to heal something that is still, there's still pain, there's still something that is, you know, um, need to be healed, it needs time and effort and then care in order to heal from it, then I'm going to share the step-by-step -step guide to heal yourself. Here's some key points that I need. So here's some points that I need you to understand about healing. The one is there's no single way. There will be multiple ways to heal yourself. Okay, whether it's plant medicine, again, whether it's breath work, whether it's a meditation, whether it's a certain program, inner child healing, shadow work, bunch. Okay, so you shouldn't caught up and have this narrow perspective on healing and just like, this is the way. No, the healing you can approach to uh, one trauma from different variety of ways. And two, is the healing comes with uh, comes with the layers. And what I mean by that is you cannot heal yourself completely just from one single practice. So let's say again, the boiling water that's spilled on your arms and it's, it's, it's really horrible, it's painful. And you don't put Vaseline or some sort of like medication or thing just for once. You probably do that multiple times, right? And then it takes time to heal. Now, our physical body is such a well-designed, you know, it heals so fast, and especially if you have the ability to heal faster, then you can heal faster than others. So, unlike physical body, our internal state can take much longer, and it can take much longer period of time with a motive for revision to heal yourself from it. So, whatever you want to challenge yourself through, to, uh, through variety of method to heal yourself and then you should definitely go ahead and try but if you want to do a self-healing without having any external factors and the best way is the inner child healing because whether you at any age that you are at the moment 10 years back or five years back can be your inner child right so just because it's called a child that doesn't mean that you know, you have to be five years old. You can be 10 years old. The first time that I did inner child healing, which is exactly uh, the way that I teach in the, inside of a program, I 
visualize myself when I was 18 years old or 17 years old. And it was very, it was very interesting experience because, you know, I cried a lot and it was a beautiful healing journey. But the, the person or myself back in the days, I visualized, I couldn't see my face. It was completely pitch black. It's almost like my shadow. And I can, you know, visualize my mom's face and another face or, you know, any other details vividly. But my presence, and he's wearing clothes, by the way, he's wearing clothes, but I couldn't see his face, just like completely black. It's a, such a weird visualization experience that I had. But it tells me exactly what I experienced because I know exactly why my face was black. You know, back in the days I struggled with the pimples. It was insane, like it was disgusting. I don't think it was normal to have that amount of pimple in my face. It's just so fucking disgusting. So I was really scared to, to be exposed. And this is the reason why I don't have much pictures that age. I don't have many. And then maybe, I, I wish I should have. I wish I could have, you know, a bunch of pictures to show, but apparently, I just stayed away from photos because I didn't want to look at myself in photos and like looking like a fucking disgusting piece of shit, right? And that's how negative I was towards myself when I was around that age because of the pimples. And it was really difficult for me. And especially, you know, when you're teenagers, you're like, you know, this, this, this age, right? It's a difficult age. And if you have like insane amount of pimples that you, you wouldn't like yourself. And, but... I really appreciate that experience because it was a very necessary experience for me to go through to understand a certain level of pain and the fears and insecurities and all that so that in my story, in my journey, I could overcome, right? So what I've done was this healing journey. And in order to do that, you need to be able to at least focus and pay attention and visualize. And these, these are the skills, right? If you do meditate on a daily basis, then you can perhaps go into the meditation and stay focused. But if you haven't meditated it before, like you don't really meditate on a daily basis, then you cannot focus as much as I can or as much as other people who meditate can. So you need to practice meditation. You need to at least practice to focus and then visualize vividly. And the female tend to be able to visualize very, very well, but male, we struggle to visualize because we're more, we're more logical person, we more visual person. That's why this is the, also the reason why that women tend to enjoy reading a porn, but the men enjoy watching porn. So the female tend to be very visionary and imaginary, which is their own skill too. So as a man, if you're a man, you need to also visualize and practice to visualize vividly. And that helps you to also manifest, you know, your desires and law of attraction so you can attract things that you visualize. And that is a very important skill. So if you're male, you have to utilize um, the practice as well. And once you have that skill, I want you to go into the meditation and I need you to really focus on your body and then just take 10 to 15 minutes to just get into the alpha state and go deep into the alpha state and be able to be aware, expand your awareness and expand your intuition and align within you and then feel so relaxed and completely letting go. And then from that state, take 10 to 15 minutes and I want you to start visualizing your inner child and I want you to have a simple chat, like have a chat as you and the other person. Right, and then she or he can be a little. He can, she can, be, and he can be uh, like a teenager or like twenty years old, as I experienced with my eighteen years old self. But I wanted to just face to face have a conversation, and it's like imagining the clothes they're wearing, imagining the visualizing the hairstyles, and imagining all the visual sensation. And then if you touch a person then I want to feel that touch, sense of touch in your, in your hands. And after the conversation, I want you to also hug him or her and to really feel the sensation when you're hugging and the, the sensation in your arms. And spend as, much time, spend as much as time that you can and you need 
in this state. And whatever you want to do, if you want to like play around, if you want to go for a walk with your inner child, then you can do that. And then spend so much time, enough time to really come again and come together and then unite and understanding each other. Not just because, oh, you're hurt, you're, you're, you know, you're in hurt, you're in pain, I'm sorry. But you really try to understand how was he or she feeling and then what was the thoughts, what was the experience. And really visualize even the things that it was, it's not necessary to even think of or remind yourself when you were that age. But those subtle details can make you realize something that is fundament, like fundamentally transformational. So, and you just, just, whether it's 30 minutes, 40 minutes, as long as, as much as you want. And I need you to stay there until you feel so healed and until you are so completely like detached from it. And I feel like, and then until you feel like you are already, you are ready to move on and then he or she, the inner child is ready to just let you go. Right, he or she needs to be at least feeling okay and supported because that what, what's happened, what happened is, this is called, I call it time traveling because you're literally just traveling time. I know it sounds crazy, but what you're doing is you're visualizing, right? And you're visualizing and the energy is beyond time and space. So your spirit and then your energy, some part of your energy is traveling back to where he or she was and then I'm pretty sure if you really really take time and think of it there will be a moment that you felt your presence right now and I know it sounds weird but maybe you understand what I'm talking about but if you do this if you do this very well and then take time and like allow yourself to really like let go and then sink in in this beautiful experience, then you will find that energy connects and then the, you back in the days were experiencing that connection some way. But obviously you couldn't realize because we can't see the future. And in the same way that now what we are struggling, what we are dealing with, if 10 years later, if you do the inner child healing, if you do this similar healing on a topic or on, on an experience that you are experiencing in this current reality, then you can feel there's some point a very subtle experience that uh, yourself, future self, is doing healing for you right now. So pay attention to these details. But again, as much as you can, stay there. And once you're ready to let go once you're ready to move on. Just watch your inner child walk away and kind of like wave with a smile. And just let her go, let, let him go. And once they disappeared from your vision, then you're ready to come back. And you just slowly make sure that you're feeling so well, you're feeling so good and so confident. There's so much compassion and love. And then you feel like it's completely healed. And then once you can bring that energy rising up, then you're ready to leave the meditation. So this is very subtle and then obviously different than uh, based on individuals. So it's, it's all about how you can visualize and then how you can take yourself onto this journey. And the healing is so, so important. And again, I want you to really, really try this. And then afterwards, let me know in the comment, how was your experience? But again, you need to be able to focus and you need to be able to visualize very well. So with that said, I'll see you tomorrow. Live your life like a movie.